This project is certainly a learning exercise for me in understanding the electromagnetic deflection and flyback timing. I even had the valve tester out. It was used to plot anode current response curves on an EL84 between minus 13 and minus 2 volts on the grid and that done at various screen voltages between 150 volts and 250 volts. The line scan circuit and scan coil driver using two EF91s and an EL84. This is a BC1151 chassis. This I got from a forum member. I got it with a 5FP7 fitted, some TV scan coils, a TV focusing unit, magnetic focusing unit, and the line output transformer that I use in that EHT generator. The EHT generator is now mounted in here, on the back here, the two valves there. Um, the line output is in the metal box. I have the 5FP7, the one set of scan coils, the focusing coil which I'm not using yet, and I've also added to the chassis a mains transformer which is at the back here, a chalk, an EZ81 to provide me with 250 volts and with 6.3 volts. So this is the current setup. You'll see here on the side of it the board with two EF91s. One is a Miller transitron oscillator. The other one is a phase um, inverter. And these are driving the EL84. And the idea is I have two plots which will give me grid bias by varying the cathode resistance and again. What I'll do next is get it hooked up to the mains and to the oscilloscope to show a few waveforms. I've fitted a brightness control so I can adjust the brightness. I'm not focusing the spot because uh, if I get it to go up and down I don't particularly want to burn a track in this screen. I have fitted a small homemade shift magnet on the back of the uh, tube so I can actually now rotate or move the centre spot which is actually something quite good for me. Right, this is the um, volume, sorry, volume control, gain control. So this allows me, I'll just turn that up a bit, make sure you can actually see it on there. Nope, I think I'm going to have to darken the windows, close the curtains, so you can actually see some, some traces. We'll try that. So this is the amplitude, and you can see on the scope two traces. This one is across the scan coils, the output. Uh, to the scan coils and I've centered it, in fact I can center it down a little bit more so I've centered it down there and I am on 10 volts per division this one is 50 volts per division and that is centered there so 50, 100, 150, 2, 250, 300 350 right at the top Right, so it's sat there at 5, 10, 15, 2, 250, 275 volts at the present time. Now, let's start winding up the trace. So that's giving me quite a healthy um, display, or healthy sweep. And what this is the cathode biasing resistor and if you notice I can change the waveform depending on how I have the cathode bias 
which is related to the charts on the EL84 I did before. The downside is I can hear it all the time and I cannot stop this upward spike. If I move the top clues down, even though I'm heavily damped on the primary side, there is always this flyback pulse that is very hard to get rid of. I can go away all TT over the top, bring into limiting, and this allows me to shape the pulses. I'll zoom in on the, the trace. Turn that down a bit now. I'm actually onto the trace only. So changing the bias allows me to change the waveform to slightly that way. So concave to slightly convex. So that means to sort of say on this part, which is the scan coils, I can change it to be quite linear. On the output side, even though it's not necessarily a straight line on that one, that's just the uh, response of the of the EL84. I say, but it will give me quite a wide trace. Come on, pan out. Quite a wide trace on this. The magnet I was talking about before that I put on the neck of the tube allows me to change it position. So I can move it to there and I can basically use this to try and centre it. Very good. It is brighter here, which I'm assuming is due to the flyback pulse giving it a higher voltage. One thing I am pleased with, if I go back onto the trace, let's go back onto the trace. Focus, come on, focus please. Is it too bright or what? What is it? Slightly better. Right, if I turn that off, set the two traces to be let's give it a bit of scale illumination. Let's see if you can see them. Yep. So what it is showing is it is going above and below naught volts on the scan and from about 260 to 70 volts, it's going down to 200 and up. No, no, sorry. Yeah, it's going down about 100 volts and going up 100 over 100 volts with the flyback pulse, which is thankfully what's giving me deflection across the full size of the screen. Otherwise, I was slightly concerned it might only deflect one half of the screen. That's the best I've been able to get it up to now. Yes, I can focus it uh, if I wish, but as I say, I'm trying to not burn a line at the present time in the uh, CRT. I can quite a large range of brightness at the moment on focus, obviously. Uh, that's it, that's the present thing. I've not done the frame scan coils or come up with any ideas for the frame time base yet. Uh, I'm finding it a bit difficult to use a magnetic one. Um, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to do the frame. It would certainly be an easier project I think with an electrostatic. But unless I can find electrostatic 5 inch that fit in the same footprint as the 5 FP4, I might very well continue with this one for a little while longer.